Alright, Brock the Howl, Brock the I'm shy, Brock the Howl, Brock the I'm shy, Brock the Howl, Brock the Howl, Bashim Yahu Shah, Bahashem, Rakak with Dash, the Ponus of the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone True Well. I want to say salutations to whole for the night out there, man. You Akim, just a document that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the priest Shaman, and I'm going to be uh, doing a quick little response or building off the. Uh, Apostle Latar to speak on the upload of the clip from RT going to the situation like um, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, these tensions that's looming in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia was about to broker a deal with Iran because um, Iran has been bombing their different oil for, um This is back in September of last year. Uh, bombed their oil facilities. Despite the fact that, you know, they're in this major uh, deal with the United States for. Um, uh, military supplies they also have deals with uh, Germany and France but the thing is the defense systems that Saudi Arabia is getting <clears throat> is really dated you know what I'm saying it'll be good for like the 80s or some shit like that or, or 1995 you know what I'm saying they're getting some real dated shit and the stuff that they're getting is not built to withstand cruise missiles the United States does not sell Saudi Arabia Tomahawk cruise missiles. Neither does it sell it to Israel because it's afraid to re uh, to relieve, uh, release that technology to those uh, particular nations. And as I said in a, a, a few shows back, um, from the information, the information I got from you know a former uh, military guy, the stuff that the United States sells to these nations are really dated. They don't. The United States don't use a Patriot missile defense system. That shit is mad old. You know what I'm saying? They get the older shit. So. The warfare that Iran is using is stuff like Tomahawk cruise missiles, stuff that drones. And why are they using Tomahawk cruise missiles? Why are they using smaller drones? Because the defense uh, systems that they're purchasing from the United States, Saudi Arabia, are built for more advanced shit, you know, like ballistic missiles that reach high altitude. Tomahawk cruise missiles don't hit high altitude, so therefore they can't be detected. You know what I'm saying? They fly, they fly low, right? And that's how they're getting under the radar and knocking out different Saudi um, oil fields. Now, with the assassination of Qasim Soleimani, the I Iran said, look, we're not going to attack the United States, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to attack their allies. So they're going to target places like Israel. They're going to target places like Saudi Arabia. And the United States just gave Saudi Arabia, what, just that could carry 20 missiles? That doesn't mean shit if you don't know how to pilot them, all right? If you don't have means of coordination, you know, they don't, Saudi Arabia can't really use all these um, weapons and stuff that they get from these different nations, man. All right. They could drop bombs on Yemen and shit, and shit like that, but you can't go toe to toe with Iran. You can't fight asymmetrical wars with Iran, you know? And they know this, okay? They know this. However, this tension that's brewing. And we're going to keep speaking on it time and time again. It goes back to Joel, the third chapter, all right? These different entangling alliances over there. Because you notice all the major players that we say play a part of prophecy, such as Syria, <sighs> all the major nations that are playing a part in the prophecies that we speak about, from Syria to Israel to Iran, Iraq, and the big foreign players, uh, Turkey, United States, uh, Russia, they're all being mingled up over there with different foreign interests, all right? Even the effect that um, this peace deal, this peace deal that, that well, was a unilateral, one-sided uh, uh, deal, okay? Uh, it was just a unilateral, one-sided deal, okay, that only benefits um, so-called Israelis. The Palestinians weren't even present, but guess what, man? The Palestinians are not the real... Palestines or Philistines of the Bible, man. All right, those are Arabs. So this whole conflict going on over there in the Middle East will not stop till the true people get established there. And not put there by a Balfour Declaration that was established post-World War II by Arthur Balfour, which was set up by the Rothschilds, all right? And not by U.S. foreign policy, man. There's going to be constant civil unrest over there, all right? Because neither of those people are meant to inherit that land. In fact, Jeremiah says, a bastard shall, a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, right? Now, Ashdod today is Tel Aviv, man, all right, and where does the largest gay parade um, take place? 
Tel Aviv, Israel, man. And, that, and that's, the, that's the land of the Heavenly Father. And pursuant to the book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, if you don't adhere to the laws, uh, statutes, and commandments of the Bible and and keep, you know, keep yourself holy in the holy land, then the Lord is going to send plagues upon you. All right? That's how come there's constant plagues over there, man. No matter how much so-called Palestinians you kill and shoot and disarm and do this, that, and the third with, there'll never be peace over there, all right? And it seems like, well, not seems like, it's evident that the so-called Jews over there, they don't want peace with them Palestinians, man, all right? The irony is Zionism is pretty much Nazism. It's the same thing because what, what did the Nazis want? The Nazis wanted a concentration of the so-called Jews to move out of Europe and into the land of Israel. And that's the same thing that the Zionists want, man. So technically speaking... The Zionism and the Nazis was on the same page, pretty much, man. All right, they were trying to establish the Israel, the Israeli state, which what? Thirty-five people over there, thirty-five nations over there, refused to acknowledge that as, a, as, a, as an actual as an actual government, man. All right. Yet you got this guy Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump. All right, is bending over backwards for the state of Israel, whatever uh, Netanyahu say. Okay, he does, and he was not the first. Okay. He was not the first. They tried to establish a so-called peace deal in the Clinton era. You know what I'm saying? Now, what does this peace deal consist of? All it does is makes all the illegal shit that they're doing legal. That's all. That, that's all they're doing. It's very. Um, as the guy was bringing out an RT, I forgot his name, man. He works with Ron Paul, but he was on RT. It's no different than when they got rid of the Patriot Patriot Act and. And put in the Freedom Act, which the Freedom Act, all that did was all the things that were illegal, illegal about the Patriot Act, they mean illegal in the Freedom Act. You know? That's how the scriptures speak about Isaiah the 10th chapter, the first verse speaks about these unrighteous decrees that he prescribes, all right? These different think tanks that Esau, so called white man, puts together and puts smooth words on it. Book of Psalms, the 55th chapter, his words were smoother than oil, yet. The seat and evil is in his heart. And that's these contracts, man. All right, so this peace deal agreement, <laughs> one, that's Benjamin Netanyahu trying to flee his judgment because he wants to swing popular voters to his side. And it's the same thing with um, God, Donald J. Trump, man. Because Donald J. Trump is in the back pockets of the Israeli government, man. All right, they got some type of dirt on him. And that's what they do with all these different presidents that they that they put into power, man. What they do is they um, honey trap them. You know, they honey trap them. What's a honey trap? You set a bait, whether whether it be a, a underage girl, underage. Girl.